Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be studying about another basics which are about mathematical induction and we will be see how we can use this to prove de Moivre's theorem. So, we will be also studying about de Moivre's theorem in this video. So, let us begin with the first principle of mathematical induction. It states that whenever we have S as a set of integer which contains A, right? Suppose S is some set of integers which contain A and uh, we also suppose that S has the property that whenever some integer is uh, greater than equal to A then it belongs to S, right? That means you have a set which contain A, right? Now you also assume that whenever you have some number which is greater than equal to a that also is a member of s then we wanted to prove that n plus 1 is also a member of s so this is according to the principle so this pro uh, principle tell you that uh, the integer n plus 1 that is also a member of s if that is so then uh, if all the three things are there simultaneously then the set s would contain every integer which is greater than or equal to a so basically uh, we are saying th uh, about all the integers which are greater than or equal to a we wanted to prove this through the pr first principle of mathematical induction so what we are doing we are constructing some set s and initially we are saying it contains a right then we are assuming that it contains all the members up to n right so uh, which are greater than a so we are saying n is greater than or equal to a right next we are saying if there in the set if there is also n plus 1 present then this set would contain all the integers which are greater than or equal to a simple as that right so this is the uh, statement uh, and mm, for the first prin principle of mathematical induction now how do we use it to prove various results so what we have to do here to use induction for proving a statement involving positive integers now this is important here we can only use this principle of mathematical induction when we have integers with us and in fact positive integers so if that is the case then what we are to do first of all we have to prove the given statement for n is equal to 1 first thing then we have to assume the given statement for the integer n that uh, it is true for the integer n and lastly we have to prove the given statement for n plus 1 if we are doing this thing then we would finally say that the given statement would be true for every integer so it would be true for every integer if we prove these three things we prove it for n is equal to 1 assume it for n and then prove it for n plus 1 this is what we are required to do so it will be more clear to you uh, when you see this example here so in this example here suppose you are given a scale which is a straight edge right a compass and a unit length what is the unit length by which you could draw a uh, length of unit one right so uh, if you are given these three things then uh, they are saying uh, we can construct a line segment of length square root n and this thing is true for every positive integer this is the statement which is made by someone now you, uh, you are asked that uh, prove this statement so what you you are going to do you are going to use the first principle of mathematical induction how you are going to use it we are first proving the result for n is equal to 1 if we take n is equal to 1 is the statement true let let us see that the statement is true for n is equal to 1 why because because in the uh, statement you are given unit length so by unit length you can draw a length of unit 1 right so uh, we can construct a line segment of have uh, of length 1 which is nothing but square root 1 so the statement uh, is true for n is equal to 1 next we have to assume that uh, we can construct a line segment of length square root n with the given uh, things right this is what we are assuming now we have to prove in the third part that we can construct a line segment of length square root n plus 1 so let's see how we will prove this thing 
using uh, the second part here we can use the second part the assumption over here in order to prove the third part so let's see so here in this case we can use the scale and the compass to construct a right angle triangle whose height we can construct to be 1 with the unit length right and uh, we can construct its base as square root n there is no issue constructing square root n why because in the part 2 we have considered that we can construct a line segment having length square root n okay so using this thing here we are able to construct a right angle triangle whose height is 1 and base is equal to square root n so if you apply pythagoras theorem onto this right angle triangle this is your triangle right here the height is 1 the length uh, base is square root n so what is the length of this it is 1 square plus square root n square so uh, square root this is the height right so it is equal to square root of n plus 1 so that means using this construction whatever is the hypotenuse it would have a length of square root n plus 1 so that means you have proved the third part here very easily so if you have proved the all the three parts that means you have proved the statement for every positive integer so this is the power of this uh, first principle of mathematical induction right moving forward let's first understand what is this de Moivre's theorem this theorem uh, is very powerful in trigonometry so it tell you that for every positive integer n and whenever you are given every real number theta for the angle which is a real number you always have cos of theta plus iota sin theta whole raised to power n this power would come ahead in the angle right this is the theorem it tell you that cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power n this thing is equal to cos of n theta plus iota sin of n theta this is the theorem which is known as de Moivre's theorem now we will prove this theorem according to the principle of first principle of mathematical induction so let's see how again we have to go through the three parts for the first part we assume n to be equal to 1 if n is equal to 1 then in place of n we are going to write 1 here 1 here and 1 here so that means we have cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power 1 that is equal to cos of 1 theta plus iota sin theta so clearly both of them they are equal to each other so that means our result is true when n is equal to 1 next what we do we assume that our result is true for n so that means this thing is true cos of theta plus iota sin theta raised to power n that is equal to cos of n theta plus iota sin of n theta correct now assuming this thing we have to next prove the result for n plus 1 so uh, basically we wanted to prove that cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power n plus 1 that is equal to cos of n plus 1 theta plus iota sin of n plus 1 theta so let's see how we can proceed so let's start with this thing the left hand side cos theta plus iota sin theta whole raised to power n plus 1 so now you can split up the powers using the laws of exponent you can write this to be this thing raised to power n multiplied with this thing raised to power 1 so that when you add up the powers add up to n plus 1 right next we can here use for this uh, this much portion we can use the second part here it tell you that its power that is equal to cos n theta plus iota sin theta so you could substitute it here in place of cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power n so this is according to the assumption made in part 2 right so writing this thing here and this thing would be as such now what we, you can do you can multiply these two terms together so that you have these four terms now this iota square is minus 1 so you have uh, this term as minus of sin n theta sin theta so you what you have done after this you have just clubbed the real parts here and the imaginary parts here right after doing that can you see a pattern here this is the trigonometric identity cos a plus b so if you remember cos a plus b is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b and sin a plus b is sin a cos b plus cos a 
sin b right now you see this is cos n theta cos theta si minus sin n theta sin theta so it is cos n theta plus theta so this comes out to be cos n theta plus theta or you could take this theta outside so it would be n plus 1 times of theta right this is for the first term for the second term here uh, we have uh, this sin a cos b cos a sin b right so basically sin n theta cos theta cos n theta sin theta so this thing would become sin of n theta plus theta again you can write this to be sin of n plus 1 theta so writing these terms here uh, after applying these trigonometric identities we have cos of n plus 1 theta plus iota sin of n plus 1 theta so that we started with this term here cos theta plus iota sin theta raised to power n plus 1 and we concluded here for cos n plus 1 theta plus iota sin n plus 1 theta right this proves our theorem